You, you knew when it happened. Even just the money sign. Forget the quote. Just the money sign. You knew that when that happened, the Adam Silver was going to come down on Rudy Gobert's head. Go to Miller's Pond in San Antonio and sign <laughs> the guy sign that's guy. playing and, and, and his dickies. <laughs> yeah. Sign that guy. Get that guy. 20 consecutive field goals in the NBA? I don't care if you're wherever you are. You're one of the guys that might get drafted by Stephen A. in the park. It's really hard to do in any competitive game. Dwayne Wade has this this like understanding of the importance of the theatricality of basketball. He dunks it, turns to face the cameras, and then steps over Verjao, and then starts screaming, that's how you fucking do it. What do you think aliens look like? I guess this sort of presupposes that you believe that aliens are real. Do you think aliens are real? Yeah, I think they're real. I have a hot take about, okay. about life, life on other You have an alien hot take? I, it's a mild sort of an alien hot take. I think... I'm not talking about us. like aliens that like in ships that walk around and like do stuff, you know, like actual highly intelligent evolved aliens. I'm talking about just like life, flat out just like life on other planets, like bacteria, not Earth, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think okay. we find it like in our lifetimes, like here in the solar system. I think they find. I that. think they've already found it, haven't they? They found the signs that. There could be life. They've found, like, uh, through spectral analysis, they've found evidence of, like, gases released by life forms. But that's not proof. I think they actually, like, go to one of the moons of Jupiter or something like that and send a probe down there, and then we find some stuff. I think that happened. I feel like the movies got them right. I feel like when they show up, they're going to look just like... Like they do in the movies where they they have like waif, waifish bodies and they're like a, a, a grayish head. color <laughs> with a big head and big eyes. Yeah. And like, they look yeah. like you could beat them up pretty easily is what it feels yeah, like. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. That's dude. why I'm not that afraid. That's why I'm not that afraid of them showing up because they, they will have evolved so far forward ahead of us that they will have no longer the, like there's no uh, UFC alien fighters. <laughs> You know what I mean? And, and as humans, we have UFC fighters. Right. We, like if, a, if an alien shows up, a ship, my first call is to like George St. Pierre. Get Chuck Liddell on the phone. We got we to gotta take it. But then gotta, they just like melt gotta, the guy with like a ray gun. See, that's the thing. I think you're right. We're only like 200,000 years away from like being like apes in the trees. And they've probably evolved for like millions of years <laughs> since like whatever they were. I, I think, yeah, but that's the thing. I think they're past violence. I think they're so far ahead that that's not even a thing that they think about it. Remember in Demolition Man, they were only like 50 years in the future <laughs> and the cops didn't know how to respond to Simon Phoenix because like, he was too aggressive. <laughs> I like that your evidence <laughs> for, for what would be a historic scientific discovery is Demolition Man, a movie, by the way, that contains no aliens, <laughs> and, and other movies in which aliens appear. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay. whatever okay. whatever i didn't know you were just gonna make fun of me today no, what are you talking about i'm not okay i'm sorry go on let's <laughs> no i'm done i'm done with the all alien right, talk right. i'm just listen i'm just i'm not worried i'm not that worried about it because i was watching okay. old ufc give me give me vitor belfort and oh, hoist gracie cook an alien we're, we're, and we're going to be fine. Let the aliens show up. You think the aliens from Signs are going to give Vitor Belfort some trouble? No. no He's going to fucking beat the shit out of him. No. Pop, pop, pop. Over. No alien invasion. We're yeah, good. They got taken out we're by good. We don't got to worry about it. And a bat. Come on. And a bat. A minor league baseball player. They couldn't handle a minor here. league baseball player. What if we throw a major league baseball player at you? Joey <laughs> <laughs> Otani versus an alien. <laughs> We win. We're fine. <laughs> we're safe. Everybody, we're good. You don't have to worry about aliens. You want to start the show? Let's start the show. From Wondery, I'm Shay Serrano. And I'm Jason Concepcion. And this is Six Trophies. Hello! I'm Jason Concepcion, and welcome to Six Trophies, a podcast series hosted by myself and Shay Serrano, in which... We come through all the NBA news from the past week and hand out six pop culture-themed trophies for six basketball-related activities in this episode. 
a lot of dunking. Jason Tatum's MVP chances take a hit. Rudy Gobert does the money sign. Oh, my God. <laughs> All that and more. Let's hand out some trophies. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> You might have noticed the horn sounded a little bit different this week. That's right. That's because that's a real, actual Six Trophies listener. He sent it to... He's, he recorded a video of himself playing the Six Trophies theme, uh, our, our royal fanfare music, and sent it to us on Twitter. His name is Slick Rock. How about that? That's pretty cool. At Slick Rock. S-L-I-C-K-R-A-C-H. And he just recorded... He said he was hanging out with his kid... And just decided to record a video of himself playing the song on a trombone, which apparently is the best instrument. Shout out that guy. We're just going to use that one from now on until it's, it's somebody great. plays it even better. Play it <laughs> on a different instrument and send it to us. And we're going <laughs> to. I love the. I, I play love it on the, a, <laughs> yeah, play it on any other, whatever, you, kazoo, trumpet, anything. Let's hear it. The xylophone, yes. triangle. Oh, that'd be Whatever wow! You that'd got. be inc- sing it. Somebody sing it. Oh God! <laughs> and send it to us, and then we're gonna use it. <laughs> we did two sets of trophies: the big trophies and the little trophies. The big trophies are up first. These ones are the same every week. First up, the Denzel Washington and Training Day trophy given out to whoever it is who had the best overall performance of the week. This week's winner: dunking and leaping, just jumping oh, high man. in general. What a week for jumps! And the dunks jumps, and leaps. The jumps have been... <laughs> the jumps. I mean, it, <laughs> listen, it's been, you know, like you and I are, are huge fans of dunks. Huge fans. Big fans. And it feels like the dunk is kind of not taking a backseat, but with the, with the uh, kind of disappointing dunk contest of the last few years and, the, and a more spread out game that's more focused on long range shooting, it feels like the dunk is kind of taking a backseat. Man... There have been some unreal sky high moments in the league over the past week. Incredible. We've gotten, Let's, we've, we've gotten Anthony Edwards right. with a game saving block against the Pacers. Just hit his head on the rim. Jump so high he hit his head on the rim to block a shot in the at in the final seconds, the closing seconds. He saves the game, jumps up there. We know him for Duncan, but now he's doing this, which was wonderful. Bangs his head on the rim, and then afterwards says, my pain tolerance is high, so he's fine. He's fine. Banged his head on the rim and then crashed to the floor. You had him. You had uh, Aaron Gordon with a monster put-back dunk. Uh, uh, the most, like, the most fuck-your-championship hopes Whoa. and aspirations dunk Against the Celtics, he was like, nope, you're not going to beat us. You're not beating us. Eat this. Eat all of this. Pa-pow. It was wonderful. That got me wonderful. like, off my couch. Cupped it. You know, jumped up, cupped it, and then just jackhammered it in with this really cool, like, arm swing. Oh, my God. And the sound it made. It, like, I know there are mics in the rim, but that thing... Sounded like a car getting dropped from like ten feet onto pavement. It was just like, <laughs> Aaron Gordon just giving you a, a a little reminder that he has given us the best dunk performance in a dunk contest of the last fifteen years with his twenty sixteen, where he should have won. Justice for Aaron Gordon in the twenty sixteen dunk contest, he should have won. You had Jalen Green's big breakaway dunk. On Anf- and uh, on Anthony, oh my God, that's my favorite. That was my favorite one. <laughs> that's my favorite one. So too. aggressive, so Listen, violent, just mad. Jalen's had an up and down career. He's had some good scoring games, but I think everybody's kind of thought he'd be a little further along. But man, whoa, that dunk! Like it looked like they kind of banged bodies in the air, and then his his body kind of twisted, and it just looked so cool the way he jackhammered it down. I mean, it was crazy you you love a you love a dunk with a collision with a mid-air collision like I two airplanes that. just yeah. crashing <laughs> together <laughs> and then <laughs> you know who i think was was the the best at that uh, like the best modern player who has never gotten the credit for being a, a an incredible in-game dunker is Dwayne wade 
Dwayne Wade was a big game hunter. Just would go like all all of Dwayne Wade's best dunks are against bigger dudes. Like when he dunked on, of course, Anders and Verjao. That's when the they one. They play the Cavs, and then he, <laughs> and then he stepped the over one. him. That's the one. When he dunked, when he dunked on a Kendrick Perkins, just yeah. goes baseline spin move, two hand cocked it back. Boom. Kendrick Perkins seven feet tall. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade's five foot eight. Boom. <laughs> Come on. Just, just. <laughs> the the Verejo, the Andy V one is great because, you know, Andy had that big mop of hair. So you felt, you really saw yeah, the impact. You felt like the, his head, yeah. it looked like a mop getting thrown to the ground, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then he just, let, much that, like that Larry Bird clip, he kind of just like laid there for a second where you're just like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, another great uh, thing about that, dunk is that it sort of showed that Dwayne Wade has this this like inherent understanding of the importance of the theatricality of basketball like he just he it was it was LeBron versus Wade right Shaq was also now on the on the uh, on the other team um he knew everybody's watching this big primetime game uh, MVP candidates going at each other and on the play immediately before immediately before a lot of people forget this LeBron went in and tried to dunk, and he missed the dunk, and he, and Dwayne Wade got the ball and went, didn't even consider passing the ball, just got the loose ball, went down court and was like, I'm gonna kill somebody right now, and then he <laughs> dunked it, and then immediately, he dunks it. He realizes the cameras are are at his back because he's coming up the right side of the court, dunks it, realizes the cameras are at his back, so he stops himself from going where his momentum should carry him, turns to face the cameras, and then steps over Verjao that way, and then starts screaming, that's how you fucking do it. <laughs> After LeBron had just missed it, no, that's how you fucking do it. Go watch the clip. You see him very clearly say that. Fucking Dwayne Wade, incredible. Oh, there was also another dunk. Uh, somebody dunked on a guy in San Antonio. I don't know. We're not going to talk about that. Oh, anyway. Okay. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, it's, oh my god! That, my se- my cell phone lit up. I my mean, cell phone lit up when that dunk when that dunk happened. Don't play the music. I didn't say his name. <laughs> Nobody said his name. Nobody said his name on purpose, Zuri. You son of a bitch. <laughs> no, I don't know who it was. A, some I don't. I can't remember who the Spurs player was. I got that. It was yeah. It was somebody. But was. I just want to say also <laughs> it was that, somebody. Um, Trace Jackson Davis has the most country music name in the nba <laughs> Doesn't he? trace jackson davis Isn't looks it? like he's put out like 10 grammy award winning cma award winning <laughs> records that you've never heard of that have been ruling the country charts for the last 15 years <laughs> there's definitely a music video of him on a on a boat in cowboy boots like yeah. reeling in a large mouth bass <laughs> While some song plays, that's got that's got to that has to exist. <laughs> uh, I want to I want to shout was out a, that what, was a great dunk. That was a great dunk. It was an incredible was dunk. Saying. I just want to shout out. I, this is a first for our for our pod for the award winning Six Trophies podcast. I would like to uh, award. Um, I, I'd like to give an af- unofficial award to Alpernin Shangun's ligaments. I'd like to give them the Kelly Clarkson Stronger Award because, man, it looked like Shangun blew his ACL uh, a couple of couple of days ago versus the Kings, and then it has recently emerged that actually his ligaments are much, much, much stronger than anybody uh, thought. So, shouts to Alpern Shangun, who's seemingly going to make a full recovery uh, in not too long here. It's a severely sprained ankle, but he'll be fine. His ligaments are like the cables that they use to hold up bridges. Yeah. Just so, I was so happy that, because it that was a, it looked bad. It looked, it looked bad. so it looked bad. bad. And you're like, this bad. is the best player on the Rockets. Uh, maybe the most exciting player. He's, for me, the most fun player to watch. I love I love a big guy down low. Yeah. Uh, he he really had just... Great. Given us hell, he he gave Wimby hell. We he just played them like a week ago, uh, and, and this is like a oh, this is a, a fun guy to watch. And then he uh, it looked bad, and I was so happy when the news came out. Shout out, shout out, Tangoon! What a what a champ! Next trophy, yeah. Lauren Hill. You might win some, but you just lost one trophy. Give it out to whoever it is who had the worst overall performance of the week. This week's winner. Oh, Jason Tatum's MVP chances. I mean, tough week for Jason Tatum's MVP chances. It Ugh. felt like it went 
it felt like you watched in that game. Listen, it's a regular season game, fine, between the Nuggets and the, and, uh, the Celtics. Certainly a, a finals preview. It was, the, it was our Catalina Trophy Award winner last week. We were really looking forward to that game. It absolutely lived up to everything. And you came away. I came away from it. Great game. Incredible game. I, def- I came away from that with two feelings. One, like, Jokic is the best guy in the league. It's not close. That's not even, that's not a controversial statement. And second, like whatever kind of nascent momentum there was behind a Jason Tatum MVP, it ended that night. It was over. It was over. There's nothing he could do now. He can't win it. It's done. But for just, just go out yeah. and try to win the championship now because that's, it's not about the MVP anymore. He's five for 13 from the field for 15 points. Four rebounds, eight assists, two steals. Did not look like the Jason Tatum we're used to watching, where he just sort of lords over a basketball game. You kept waiting for it. You kept waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it. He has that moment at the end of the game where they have a chance to tie it or take the lead. They're down by two. It's a fast break. They've got the ball, and they kick it out to Tatum, and he shoots at three. And by that point, it just felt like there was a 0% chance that ball was going in. Like, like nobody in Denver was worried when that shot went up. You're just like, oh, thank God it's Tatum shooting. It's how it felt that night, which is a crazy way to feel about one of the five or six best players in the NBA. Do you, you know, occasionally I'll, I'll check in on like a team's Reddit. And it's one thing to like watch the league all the time as we do. It's another thing to like get on the level, you know, because when you're a fan of a team, you see things through a very specific lens and you live and die with every possession in a certain way. You have these expectations. And it was, I mean, I know there'd been some criticism of Tatum that it kind of leaked into the general consciousness. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of Celtics fans that like maybe he wasn't super clutch, even though, you know, it's... I have vivid me- recent memories of him coming through in play in big playoff moments. You know, last year versus uh, versus the Sixers is is one, but I had not realized the kind of uh, intensity of the criticism of Jason Tatum, like as quote not a clutch performer amongst certain segments of the Celtics fan base. It's like when I uh, I remember going on to the uh, Warriors Reddit a few years ago and being like, man, the Warriors are awesome. They're you know, like this is on the run to their uh, most recent championship. And, and people are just like, fuck Steve Kerr. He's an idiot. What's going on with these <laughs> rotations? I'm like, Steve Kerr, like multiple, <laughs> multiple championship winning coach, Steve Kerr. Wow. And it was just, it was, I'm still kind of surprised by it. Like, I understand that he didn't, you, you, he played a bad game, period. He had a bad game. But they were right in it. And I don't by any means think that like he's, like not a clutch guy, but that is really some of the conversation that's out there. It's it's just interesting. They're mean to Jason Tatum. They are they're mean, mean to, to him. Jason Tatum. They're, they're mean really to Jason Tatum. There's like a like some <laughs> of the memes. You know, there's uh, there's graphs and stuff. There's a lot of uh, analytical uh, data showing you that like uh, Jason Tatum's shooting percentage, like in clutch moments in the fourth quarter, kind of kind of dips. There is like a bunch of memes that were using like the um like like an invisible man like from some uh uh like <laughs> park somewhere like a guy in a suit where he had no head walking around and it was like uh Jason Tatum when the lights get bright. I was like, "Wow. Jason Tatum didn't he have 42 in like in a in a potential closeout game against Philly in the playoffs last year?" Like um it's I mean, I do the same thing, but it's always interesting to see the level of criticism that fans <laughs> level at their own players and in the way they do, because it's just different. I think what what should happen is they should trade Tatum to the Spurs. That's what I think. <laughs> I Get think him out of there. Get him out of there. Meanwhile. What a toxic environment. <laughs> meanwhile, man, Jokic, who is the best guy? Put on a I am the best guy performance last night against the Raptors. The Nuggets were down like double digits to the Raptors going into the third quarter. And Nikola Jokic just did the like, fuck you, Jobu, I'll do it myself thing. And was like, went to another level and willed them to the win 125-119 against the, against the Raptors. It was actually like an incredible, holy shit, what can you do with this guy? I don't think... They, it, there's nothing that can be done with Jokic right now. And he's been doing it for a while. Like you can't, there's literally nothing. There's nothing that can be done with him. 
Them, 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 them guys in Denver are wearing that championship belt right now. They're yes, wearing they, it. They are they wearing are it. They are wearing it. They're displaying it. They are brandishing it. <laughs> Next trophy. The Dominic Toretto, I live my life a quarter mile at a time trophy. Given out to whoever it is who made a short-term decision with no regard for future consequence. This week's winner. What a <laughs> what a guy, Rudy Gobert. Whoa, Rudy Gobert whoa. with with the top five Dominic Toretto. I live my life a quarter mile at a time <laughs> performance <laughs> this season. <laughs> Uh, will you will you walk us through what happened? Yeah, Jason, this so is the best possible thing. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the the wolves were uh, playing the Cavaliers. Um, Rudy Gobert gets whistled for his sixth foul, banging down low with with Jared Allen in the fourth quarter, and Rudy had taken exception all game with a bunch of stuff that had happened, and uh, Rudy starts making the kind of, you know, where you rub your fingers against your your thumb, against your fingers, the kind of money gesture at Scott Foster. The money gesture, Implying, baby. essentially, that uh, Scott Foster was on the take. And then later on, in the post game said, quote, mistakes happen. happen. Referees make mistakes too, but sometimes I think it's more than mistakes. I think everyone that's in this league knows. I think it's got to get better. I know the betting and all that is becoming bigger and bigger, but it shouldn't feel that way. <laughs> Essentially implying that, like, for whatever reason, <laughs> Scott Foster and other NBA referees are shaving points, inflating points, moving the moving the score in order to benefit from the from the now legalized uh, gambling that has completely taken over all sports, not even just like the NBA, but all sports. And uh, the league, you, you knew when it happened, even just the money sign, forget the quote, just the money sign. You knew that when that happened, the Adam Silver was going to come down on Rudy Gobert's head. It was going to be and, big. It was going to be big. And the league has now levied the biggest fine I can remember. Maybe is it the biggest fine ever? A hundred thousand dollars on Rudy Gobert. A hundred thousand. <laughs> this for, it, certainly oh, for criticiz- criticizing a referee. Yes, that's the biggest one. J- James Harden got hit with a hundred thousand dollar fine earlier this season for not for refusing to play for the Sixers or not do whatever you're supposed to do with the Sixers. But yeah, this is the biggest referee one. You, it, the context here is that Scott Foster very famously was called by Tim Donahue, disgraced NBA referee, a hundred times or something. Hundred and thirty during the times season they when spoke on the phone. <laughs> some of some of the conversations were like less than a minute, thirty seconds, something like that. And and he never got in trouble for that. He said this was a, those calls were unrelated to bet betting and gambling. It was a different thing, but we don't have to talk about what the other thing was. But it wasn't gambling or but he never like officially got in trouble. But that's always sort of followed Foster around and Gobert doing that. I I know that hurt Scott Foster's feelings. I know that hurt. That had to hurt so bad. But yeah, the you knew the NBA was they were coming with a big fine. You can't do this. You can't imply this. You're the you're half a game out of first place in the Western Conference. You're a marquee team in the league right now. There's no they're not gonna let you get away with any of this with any of this stuff. I the thing of the thing of Gobert when he says, I know the betting and all that is becoming bigger and bigger, but it shouldn't feel that way, is I don't I don't know that there's any way for it to not feel that way. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I agree with you. It's, I don't you know, know what it, I, it, you know, I think part of this is the league's own the, the league's own doing, you know, the the, uh, the NBA for years had a stance of they were going to separate themselves from gambling as much as possible. Obviously, some of that was a result of Donaghy. They weren't going to do stuff in Vegas, like yada, yada, yada. Now, of course, with the money that's being introduced by betting, it's very important. I'll, I'll say this, not to support what Rudy Gobert is saying. I don't uh, know or believe that refs are affecting the point spread or point shaving in any kind of way. I'll say this. What do we know about what the league does to ensure that referees don't gamble or affect the point spread. I don't know anything about it. I don't know what I don't know what that system is. I think it would behoove all of us to know more about it. Like 
because <laughs> to, to Rudy's point, gambling is such a huge, huge part of sports now. And I think much like when I get on an airplane and there's like a whole one minute presentation about where the airbags are and where's the life vest and what do I do if this <laughs> happens? And what, you know, like I think there needs to be so like here. Okay, here's how we ensure that refs don't uh, gamble and we, uh, you know, monitor FanDuel accounts and whatever. You know, whatever it is, I don't, it, it, I don't know what their system is, and I think that's the problem. None of us know how the league is keeping track to ensure that referees and other uh, league employees aren't gambling in a way that affects the sport or even gambling in general on their own sport. We actually have no idea. We don't know how they do it. We just trust that they're doing it. So I think we need to know more about that. I think we just need to know more. That's it. We need to know more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that there's anything they can say or do that makes it better, though. Like if they go, you know what we do? We do this, this, and that. Immediately, I would just go, mm, that's not. Yeah, not but I would feel that. I would, or, like, or that's not okay. bad. I don't Come know. On. Yeah, yeah, it'd be better than knowing literally nothing. It's like a black box. What are you doing? Uh, d uh, don't worry about it. We got it. Okay. You know who was who was early in on this is our friend Kirk Goldsberry. He started talking about this as as soon as the gambling stuff started. Like you started seeing ads pop up at wherever he was like, "Hey, this is going to be a problem, everyone. Hey, everyone, this is a problem. This is not going to work out that great. You got to stop early." Shout out Kirk Goldsberry. Next trophy. The Daniel Plainview, I've abandoned my child, I've abandoned my boy trophy, which is given out to player or team we're temporarily given up on for the week. This week's winner of the NBA is given up on it. Sounds like the NBA G League Ignite. Are they out of here, Jason? Is the G League Ignite out of here? You folks who are uh, NBA nerds, basketball nerds like ourselves might remember uh, or be aware of the G League Ignite, which is a... G League professional team that sought to give players another avenue to getting into the NBA. If you didn't want to go to college, money is more of a concern. You want to start earning money right away, but you don't want to go to Europe. You don't want to go overseas, as Brandon Jennings once did uh, years ago. Then you would go to the G League where you develop your skills uh, against future and past and potentially present NBA talent that are playing for other G League teams. Uh, and then you would enter the draft and get drafted really high. Well, the G League Ignite recently came in last in the G League. The season is terrible. G League Ignite stinks. And then uh, the uh, G League Ignite alums mostly come in not ready for the NBA. Jalen Green. I, I think you'd say probably Kaminga is the best guy, but it's taken him a couple of years. And he's also like playing with like legends and he had to go and complain to Steve Kerr about his playing time. And now he's, he's really taken a leap this year, but it's taken longer than we expected. Uh, Scoot over at the Blazers has had a very, very rough start to the year has looked, has looked lost at times, like straight up, just like lost. Um, and now Adam Silver uh, has come out and said, uh, recent comments during uh, the All-Star break that essentially they're looking at disbanding the the Ignite, uh, particularly now that the name and image likeness uh, rules are in force over at uh, the college level, allowing players to really make significant money off of their personal brand in addition to, uh, you know, other things. So that, I think it's the Ignite, it never ignited and it's going to be out of here. <laughs> Boo. Boo him, Zuri. <laughs> what? <laughs> the ignite never ignited. <laughs> it's never ignited. Remember, I was like, we thought these guys were going to be great. Jim Green's had his moments, as we mentioned above, but has not really lived up to it. And Alpern and Shingun is now the star of that, of that team. And that kind of, that dynamic is kind of the microcosm. Guys have been coming from... Europe, other international leagues have been coming into the league it, it, it kind of unheralded draft positions, much more skilled and ready for NBA play. And then you have the Ignite guys coming in and it's t and the talent is there, but it's taken them a while to catch up to the game. Um, and so the G League Ignite, about to be out of here, I think, folks. How about this? An, an, an alternate pitch for what to do with the G League Ignite. 
because as you mentioned, it's this is not a team that players are going to go to 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 they're not going to like skip out on college because now you can make money in college, so you're going to be doing okay, right? Uh, maybe what you do. Remember that show, Pros versus Joes. I loved Pros. Where they would pit. Joe. Man, I love that show. <laughs> they just pit regular dudes uh, yeah. against a former professional athletes. They'd be like, oh, "Try and guard Randy Moss catching this pass <laughs> <Yeah>. or whatever." <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> that show is crazy. It Good was trying to out rebound Dennis Rodman. It's I like- think. <laughs> Maybe what you do here is you just sort of go that direction with it. You just make, we have one team in the G League, and it's just made up a regular, just from the park, from the rec center, from the Y, from 24-hour fitness. Hey, y'all want to come play against some uh, pro players? Just make a whole team of that, and then throw them out there, and then we just watch them play against professionals. And I think that would be great. I think that would be very educational uh, to watch. It would also be very funny. And it would certainly be more entertaining than what we've gotten from the G League Ignite for the last two years or whatever it's been. You know, it's funny. I used to, um, back when I was delivering packages, when I was working as a leather delivery boy um, in New York City, <coughs> I would listen to... That, sound, uh, that sounds sexual. It's well, not, I, but, it's, I, but it sounds it like... like <laughs> I was delivering rolls of like finished leather to, uh, to the factory. Anyway... Um, I'd listen to ESPN Radio all the time. And back then, Stephen A., pre-star like star Stephen A., was on ESPN Radio um, a lot. He had his own show there. And the Knicks were terrible at that time. This is the Isaiah Thomas years where Isaiah's coaching and then also GMing, and it was just bad. And uh, and they needed they needed size and because everybody was hurt. And, and Isaiah had – and then Stephen A. had this take – just go down to the any park where they're playing basketball in New York City and sign the biggest guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said it in his very Stephen A. way, where he's just like, you can go to any park. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that was his idea. And it was really, he was dead serious about it. It was very funny. <laughs> but that had been a very similar about- idea to Stephen A.'s old idea. Go down to any park, How? sign a guy. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go to the park, sign a guy. Go to Miller's Pond in San Antonio and sign Just the guy sign that's guy. playing in, in, in his dickies. <laughs> yeah. Sign that guy. Get that guy. The guy the, is, sign the guy who just got off of his shift at the Toyota plant where he's putting bumpers on trucks. The guy get the in guy the in, get the guy in the Dickies and the, the Tims right there with the one the rolled guy, up yeah. sleeve and he's got the cigarettes in his sleeve. Get that guy. Get the guy running running a pick and roll in factory pants. That's a tough. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> what if you put what what about a G League Ignite but it's with aliens? And we just get it wow, and we just get aliens. Well, I, I think the G League about to be the most interesting sports league on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> in the solar system if we get aliens oh, yeah. um we we take you take starting center you have the xenomorph from alien she's oh, gonna wow. she's gonna come in here she's the gonna queen? come in here right not even just the like queen. the regular xenomorph soldier the queen oh wow no not I mean, the she's... regular the queen oh from aliens excuse me yeah 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 um, i mean she's like th- her. what 25 feet tall jeez that's she's a big, big she's a big woman yeah, big That's size. A, down she's there. Shaq. She's Shaq down okay. low. She could guard. She could guard Jokic. Okay. Right. You, he, she would. She would have a chance. You have her. You have uh, the alien from Life. When it's gotten kind of big. <laughs> right. That's your point guard. Take the alien from. <laughs> take the alien from Life. <laughs> okay. Remember that like weird, flowery. It was just all muscle. Is all that it was? Yes. Just muscle. Yeah. It was yeah, nothing yeah. else. Um. Yeah. Take that. Take. Uh, who else do who else do we want? How about the um the uh, uh the alien from Splice? That's part. Oh wow! That's part like part human, alien child ray, but like has that prehensile tail. I think you put them at guard or maybe shooting guard, like one or the two, and let them cook from the perimeter. I'm gonna go with Et um, as your point Et. Guard. No, he he would be terrible. Come on, but like he can lift things with his mind and stuff. (laughs) Like imagine, imagine you're playing the aliens, right? You shoot the ball. Arms are too short. You let, but let's say you get open, right? You shoot the ball. All of a sudden, ET's little finger lights up, and the ball just goes. You're never hitting a jumper. 
ever. And then when you okay. jump in the air, he's just gonna fly you like over the town. He's gonna like he's, the little finger's gonna light up, and you're gonna go flying <laughs> out of the arena. <laughs> <laughs> and every time it happens, you're just gonna hear bum bum ba da 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 da, flying into the crowd. <laughs> All right, uh, then let's take one. Let's take an alien from the faculty. I like those. Oh, aliens. great! They're okay. aggressive. They're aggressive, strong aliens, and, and then coming where, off the bench. You never know who they are. You never know. Is the referee yeah. an alien? You're doing the money sign at the referee. Fucking turns into an alien and just sucks out all of your organs or whatever. And then this is a cheat. This is a cheat. Okay. But he's an alien. We we saw him arrive to Earth in a spaceship. Okay. Our star our star player running the pick and roll with the Queen Xenomorph. Unstoppable. This is our Shaq and Kobe. This is our 2001 Shaq and Kobe. <laughs> this is our our our, our power our, our strong forward or small forward, excuse me. You mean Predator. Oh, that's a great one. No, that, predator that's great. on That counts. That's great. That, you know who I'm good, glad right? that that's we good. didn't You know who I'm glad we didn't pick? The aliens who? from Independence Day. They were Absolutely the weakest. First of all, you come Awful. all the way here to get knocked out, get punched in you the face. You got knocked the fuck out. You got by Will knocked Smith. the fuck out by Will Smith, by a guy. Just Welcome to Earth. In the face. And then <laughs> <a> secondarily, <laughs> your entire like security net got hacked by like a laptop with Windows 95. <laughs> no good. No bueno. Awful. <laughs> aliens get those from aliens out of here. <laughs> Next trophy. The Chief Keef, that's that shit I don't like trophy, which is given out to a player, or team, or anybody or anything who did something, and we don't like it. We oh, just man. don't like it. I don't like it. This week's winner, the misspellings <laughs> on Kobe's statue. You can't. You make Kobe's statue, it's got two misspellings on there, or three, excuse me, three misspellings. Jose Calderon misspelled his name, Von Wafer misspelled his name, it's and vom. the phrase coach's decision, Vom Wafer. They have Jose, Jose Calderson, Vom Wafer. Vom Wafer somehow sounds even more fake than Von Wafer. And co- and you misspelled Coach's decision, which is, I think, the most egregious. Yeah, that's the worst. Because if you see the picture, yeah. they got it right immediately above it. And then it's right terrible. underneath it, they spelled it wrong. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you what? doing? People have been waiting years for this. Come on. Years. They spelled and it wrong. And here's oh the other God. problem. It's literally carved in stone. Guys, it's carved like, in stone. You got to get it right when you're carving it in stone. Because you got to check and double you, check and triple check. Come on. This is you sure. Really really bad, folks. This is it's embarrassing. Really bad. <sighs> um <laughs> And the, so the statue's been out for a while, yeah. a month or whatever. And people just now noticed. And then they, the, the pictures come out. It goes viral. And then the people in the Lakers organization were like, we knew about it. We're, fi- we're already fixing it. Do you think they knew about it? Or were they like, fuck? I, I don't know I that didn't. they knew about it. I think what happened, <laughs> I think that whoever carved this, if they realized, were like, shit, don't, don't, just don't say anything. And I, you know, Maybe they won't you fuck notice. up like, at that level, you're just like, I, 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 don't, don't, let's just don't say anything. And then... Like, I don't think there's any chance that, like, this came to, like, Jeannie buses it to Jeannie. We have an issue with the spelling on the... No. Nobody wants to tell the boss that they fucked up spelling coach's <laughs> decision after spelling it correctly. <laughs> they don't want to do that. So I think that it, uh, that they didn't know about it because everybody involved in directly doing this was just like... Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> if you are Jose Calderon or or Von Wafer, are you? Uh, do you feel? Yeah, are you are you bummed about this? Are you like, hey, you couldn't even get? Yeah. I'm or are bummed. you happy that they misspelled it? Okay, okay, I don't know. I'm bummed. Listen, who knows? If they carve it into a statue, and then there's like the nuclear war happens, or the or the AI becomes sentient and goes Skynet and kills us all, and then there's a period of warfare. And uh, and but then eventually human the human race stabilizes like five hundred years later and rises again and then they're looking at all the archaeological <laughs> like artifacts they're gonna look and they're gonna go hey this guy Vom Wafer played with this guy who apparently was like a president of basketball back in the day and they're not gonna know <laughs> what your real name is and I think that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> when when the, when the pictures came out and we saw that <laughs> that the, their names were spelled wrong. Anytime something like this happens where somebody is minding their own business and then all of a sudden they just get pulled backwards into a joke. Uh, I always think of I always think of Eric Benet, who when Jay-Z was putting out the 444 album, which was his response to having cheated on Beyonce, because uh, she did Lemonade, he comes out with a 444. And in the very first song, if I'm not mistaken, he starts talking about Eric Benet and he's like, never go Eric Benet. And like poor Eric Benet was just, this is in reference to him having cheated on Halle Berry. And he's just minding his business, just minding his business. And then now he's in the, now he's in the mouth of the most famous rapper in the history of the world. And you, I, that's how I felt when, for, uh, when Jose Calderon and Von, Von Wafer showed up on my feed. Sorry, guys. Man, Sorry about that. Sorry, guys. I feel bad. Von, Von is somewhere like, damn it. God damn it. <laughs> Next trophy, the Step Brothers Catalina Wine Mixer Trophy, giving out to the thing we're most excited about for the upcoming week. This week's winner, can he keep it up? Can he keep getting triple doubles? Luca on the triple double streak gets six thirty point triple doubles, which is fucking nuts. He had a twenty seven point triple double uh, last night. We record this on Tuesdays. He had a twenty seven point triple double. Seven? Can he keep going? Suddenly, I want to watch Mavericks basketball games. I hate the Mavericks. I want to watch the games. I think it can I think he can absolutely keep doing this. To me the more the almost more imp- well I don't know about more impressive but the a very impressive and incredibly unheralded streak that is currently going on with the Dallas Mavericks is Daniel Wizards former Wizards legend Daniel Gaff oh. Gafford is currently getting the ball in the rim He's- he is 28 for his last 28. He went nine for nine last night. He's 20 for his last 28. That's seven away from the all time record of most shots without a miss. That is, pre- I mean, that's hard to do. That's crazy. And you know what? If I go nine for nine, like, I'm shooting until I miss. That's it. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm going to no, continue. Sorry, going guys. Up. I haven't missed. I'm going to continue to go. Some of these, I think I've, it was a couple of games ago, where uh, one of their uh, early games in the streak, he went like three for three or two for two. Nah. If I haven't missed, I'm shooting more. More. Gavard, you need to be shooting no, get, more. Get them up there. Get them up there. This, rem- this reminded me of my favorite college basketball team of all time. It's the 2018 Oregon Ducks. The, they had a player on there. Her name was Ruthie Hebert. She's in the uh, in the WNBA now, but there was one point where she hit thirty three shots in a row. She That's played down crazy. low in the post. Again, again, I love a post player. She That's was a big crazy. player who played like a big player, and she hit thirty three in a row uh, over the course of like two or three games. She just wouldn't miss. And man, when the player gets it going like that, what do you? Go, just go. Just keep going. Just go. I would Guess never go. Has- I would never go nine for nine in a game. I'm gonna go 25 for, or I'm gonna go nine for 25 before I go nine for nine. Guess who has the record for the the 35 uh, shots without a miss? Guess who has the record? 35 shots without a miss. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Wilt. Yeah, it's Wilt. Wilt. Is it Wilt? I mean, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean it's Wilt. That makes sense. I mean, Gaff, you gotta go. (laughs) Like, you have to go for it. If you can get a record owned by Wilt, I mean, you tell your kids about that. If you're if you're gaff, do you now? I'm only shooting dunks. That's it. I'm not doing anything but dunking it T- till I get the record, and then I'll go back to shooting it. But right now, I mean, now, that's basically dunk. all he's doing. 347 of his last 362 attempts have come from nine feet. So he's just like a vertical threat, and with the space that Luca and Kyrie create, and, and, and all the attention that they garner, he's just like in there. This is not to say also that these are easy shots. Like guys are defending him, but he's just shooting from in there. And man, 20 consecutive field goals in the NBA. I don't care if you're wherever you are. You're one of the guys that might get drafted by Stephen A in the park. Like that's (laughs) really hard to do in any competitive game. Yeah. Go for it. Go for a gaffe. All right. Now suddenly I care more about his thing than Luca's <laughs> triple than Luca's triple double streak. Thirty point triple doubles is like 
Six in a row, 39, 10, and 10, 35, 11, and 11, 39, 10, and 11, 38, 11, and 10, 37, 12, and 11, 30, 12, and 16. The game before that, 45, 9, and 14. Like, God, he's a, he, He's so good, and it, it makes me very, very happy that he's so good, and the Mavericks are still in eighth place. They're in eighth I know, place. because they're losing some of those games. <laughs> see, that's the other thing is they're losing those games. Did you see the clip from, uh, I think it was the, the Utah game, when they were, like, chanting Lucas sucks, and they asked him about it after the game, and he's like, I like it. Like, I don't know why they're saying that, because they know it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great response. I That's know, a great it's really response. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I love when somebody says the exact right thing. Do you watch yeah. Survivor, Jason? Do you of watch course. Survivor? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a diehard Survivor fan. Let me tell you something about me. I watch Survivor Australia. That's how. Oh, that's okay, how okay, crazy okay, okay. I am about it. Like I'm watching the entire Survivor franchise. There was a part in last week's episode where they were trying to trick this woman into believing that she had a real idol. They gave her a fake idol. And she sort of was sniffing around that it was fake. And so she went to the guy who gave it to her and was like, you got to tell me, is this fake? Is this, like, look me in the eye and tell me, is this yeah. fake? And he was like, and, what? And his response, give, give, it, give it back his to response, me. Yeah, yeah he, that's what he said. He said, tell you what, give it back. And that was all he had to say. And she yeah, was like, all right, I'm like, in. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the exact right thing to say. <laughs> It just totally disarmed her. All right. Uh, let's do the little trophies. You want let's to do the little do trophies? It. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do the little trophies. My first little trophy, the Ewan Davis. And inside Ewan Davis, I'm so fucking tired. I thought I just needed a night's sleep, but it's it's more than that trophy. To Josh Hart, who's played 40 or more minutes in nine straight games. There's too many games of 40 or more minutes. He's got to be so tired. So tired. My first little trophy is the Jack Bauer. I'm Federal Agent Jack Bauer, and today is the longest day of my life. Trophy two. Clippers announcer Brian Seaman for his daylight savings rant about the Clippers having to play two games in 22 hours. Play the clip. That made that schedule possible. Should be ashamed of themselves. Just a 22-hour turnover for the Clippers. Day games on a back-to-back are difficult, period. Whether they're in December, January, they give the Clippers a back-to-back day game situation. The day of daylight savings time, and then they bump the game up an hour. It's 22 hours in between tip-offs, which goes against NBA protocol. A shameful scheduling situation. Well, it, uh, those responsible, by the way, are probably the um, Lakers games days game day stuff. The Lakers also had a game in the building later that evening, and I guess they decided they needed more time to switch over from the Clippers, thus bumping up the Clippers' uh, uh, start time, uh, which just goes to show you that the, it's good the Clippers are getting their own house. That trophy might have been some of your finest work this season. The longest day of my life trophy for playing. That's great. It's great work. My next little trophy, the Rocky Balboa and Creed, one step at a time, one punch at a time, one round at a time trophy. That trophy goes to Lonzo Ball, who Billy Donovan said has been showing great improvement as he works his way back from injury. Come on. Keep coming, Lonzo. Let's go. One step at a time. One punch at a time. One round at a time. Can't wait to see you play basketball again. My next little trophy is the Ace Freely. Back in a New York Groove trophy to the steadily healthifying New York Knicks. Jalen Brunson returned this weekend against the Magic in an uh, absolute... A uh, must-win game, a uh, defensive-centric game, and OG and Anobi, welcome back. Welcome back. We need you. We need you, and Josh Hart needs the rest. So come back, everybody. Get healthy. Let's go. My last little trophy, the Butthead and Beavis and Butthead do America. This is the coolest thing I have ever seen, trophy. <laughs> 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 I forgot about Beavis and Butthead. I miss them. I hope they're, they're doing really okay. Funny. Kids yeah. kids today don't know about Beavis and Butthead. That trophy to SGA. Because while he was being interviewed uh, post-game after another great game, the, the, the reporter talks to him about his consistency on the court and his response, which is the coolest response possible. My whole life is consistent. I love it. I love it. His teammates are standing there with him. As soon as he says it, they lose their mind. That Everybody just 
just understood. It's the exact right thing to say. And we just talked about it. I love when that happens. My final little trophy is the Dune <laughs> trophy <laughs> to, to us, the award-winning to Six us. Trophies podcast for inadvertently... I, I'm giving us. I'm crediting us with this inadvertently sparking the uh, the TikTok social media trend done with the '90s, in which uh, younger basketball players are like guys in the '80s and '90s suck. I think we started this with our conversation about whether Michael Jordan had rivals, <laughs> and I specifically picked this Dune uh, clip because uh, uh, you know uh, Paul Atreides, the Lisa Malgaib, un, 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 unwittingly sparks a galactic war. And we didn't want it to go this far. We didn't want the entire era of basketball to get discredited. But we love being influential. What? And we are giving ourselves this credit. <laughs> and so another award, another trophy for the award-winning Six Trophies podcast is this little trophy. Congratulations to us. Ring it up. Ring it up. The, the two-time award-winning <laughs> Six right. Trophies podcast. Now, wow, look at us. Look at us go. We did it again, Jason. We Another did it. perfect episode. Another perfect episode. We close each episode just by saying the names of underappreciated old basketball players with no context at all while the theme music carries us out. Zuri, will you play the theme music, please? I'm Shea Serrano. That's Jason Concepcion. Producer Zuri in the shadows making the noises. See y'all next Wednesday. Eric Dampier. Oh, damn. Let's go with another Warriors legend, Earl the Pearl Boykins. Ooh, Dan DeCow. Sonics legend, Vlad Rad, Vladimir Radmanovich. Super quick, do you remember those Nike commercials where the players would turn into animals and they did one with yeah. Earl Boykins and he turned into a frog, a tiny yeah. little frog? <laughs> <laughs> Devin Harris. Devin um, Harris used to kill the Spurs. Knicks single game assist record holder Chris Duhon. Oh yes, Keith Van Horn. The unsung Butler, Rasul Butler. Rasul. Sean Bradley. Bobcats legend Adam Morrison.